Hey everyone, good afternoon. It is just about that time. It's a little after 1.30, so you all know what that means. It's time for our live stitch out today. I'm gonna give everyone another minute or two to hop on here and join in with the fun. But to introduce myself again, if you're new here, my name is Melissa and I am here with Anita Good Design for today's watch and stitch session. So this is the third week of August, y'all. I had no idea we are already this far into the month. But for this week's Watch & Stitch project, again, Watch & Stitch is available every month. We have new designs with different techniques shown. So for this week, we'll be doing the Watch & Stitch printed fabric quilt block. And this does feature folded fabric border process. So I hope everyone's having an awesome afternoon on this fine Tuesday. To get started, I wanted to go over a little bit about what I have on hand and what you'll need in order to make the project. But just remember that if you are purchasing the Watch & Stitch booklet on our website, it will have instructions with you to follow along. You also can pause this live video at any point and play back sections that you may need or watch it later. So we're here to help you all. So for today's design in the printed fabric section, I will be stitching printed fabric block three which has the word love on it. So right there, if you can see my PDF, I have it printed out off of the booklet itself so that I can follow along. For today's video, I am demonstrating a smaller quilt block size. So most of Anita's samples are stitched in our A size in case you're curious. But for today's video, I'm gonna be doing the D size quilt block. So this one's a little bit smaller. Dive right in. The first few things we are going to need in order to stitch the watch and stitch printed fabric block will be a choice of stabilizer. Now the one we use here is No Show Mesh, so I have that ready and prepped in my hoop to right and nice and tight and fit in there. And then we slide the hoop back into the machine. I have my design file loaded up already, so it is set and ready for that first step. To go with that design set, you will also need a piece of quilt block batting, your printed fabric, now this is where we'll take a second and say very important note, you need an inkjet printer in order to print this out. Um, there is special printed fabric paper you print the design out on and we do have instructions included with the collection to help guide you through that. Um, and we went ahead, printed it and trimmed it down to size. Now I still have my paper backing on here so I can show you that process when we get to that step, but I have that on deck as well as four pieces of folded fabric border strips. So again, they're just little strips of fabric cut down to our D size, and we're doing two different colors here for some visual interest. So with my materials all laid out, again, I'm doing printed fabric block number three in this month's watch and stitch design. So if you are tuning in with me, I have a color of black thread set into my machine just so everyone can see where I'm at. And I'm going to start the first machine step and hit go. Now, if you're new with Anita, or again, you're hopping on to Watch & Stitch to learn the basics, our first step anytime we do a quilt block is known as our squaring stitch. Now, even if the block's rectangular, the point of that is it helps square off where we're going to be working and lets you see exactly where the design will be placed. So once we have our first step ran, which is our squaring stitch, you'll see that square quilt block shape and we're gonna take a piece of quilt block batting and lay that over the block. You wanna make sure the batting covers the stitches on all four sides. And once you have it in place, you can choose to use tape, or in my case, I like to just watch it with my hands. Watch your fingers. <laughs> but we'll run the tacking stitch for that batting. If you have any questions while you guys are watching and tuning in, be sure to shoot them in the comments section. We have Brooke in the back, background, just gonna say behind the scenes, um, and she is helping um, feed those questions to me. So if I'm doing anything and you're like, how did she do that or why? Let us know in the comments section and I'll be happy to answer. All right, so we are trimming out the batting next, which will be our next step. For this, I want a handy dandy pair of curved tip embroidery scissors. These are my personal favorite, which are Ginger scissors, if anyone's curious. Now that the tacking stitch is ran, we're ready to trim. I'll pull that out and kind of show it off to you so you can see where that stitch is and lay it in front of me. We're gonna take a pair of those curved tip scissors. Now you can use regular, but the curved tip really helps you snip nice and tight to the line. And we are gonna trim away that excess batting. 
Now we do this so that there's no excess in the seams of our block. That way if you end up piecing it with something else, even if you don't make a whole quilt, if you left that excess batting, you would get what we call speed bumps or humps in the back of your quilt where all those extra seam allowances kind of bulk up. So by trimming this, we remove some of that additional bulk in the block. So we have it all trimmed out, ready to go. Now with printed fabric, the important thing to know is with a traditional quilt block, you just lay your fabric down and the next step would be a tacking stitch for that fabric. But with printed fabric, we have to know exactly where and how to place it. So the next machine step is going to be a placement stitch for our printed fabric. So again, I'm using that black thread, so it's very contrasted, but you can use whatever color you'd like. And we're gonna run that placement stitch for the printed fabric. Now again, I mentioned we went ahead and printed our printed fabric early um, and trimmed it to the red lines that surrounded the object that we wanted cut out. So it does have cut guides for you on the PDFs. But in order to use this, we still have the paper backing. So a little ASMR there for you all. <laughs> We have to peel off the paper and we do so just like this. And we're left with a paper backing that has like a sticky residue and then the clean non-sticky fabric material that has our printed design. So I'm gonna set the paper backing aside. We don't need it anymore. And we'll pull the hoop out. And from far away, you might not be able to see it that well, but it did do a placement stitch for that fabric right in the inside of the block. Now the important thing whoop, for printed fabric is to make sure you're placing it the correct orientation in the design. So my best pro tip to you is to locate the design you are stitching in your PDF and look at the design picture and make sure that the printed fabric when you lay it down matches up with the orientation of the block. Um, in some of our standard collections we'll put a little indicator notch on the block but for these we did not since they're very simple. Um, so for in this one, I want my flower and the single leaf by itself to be located at the top of the block. And to give you guys a fun little notion insight to what we use, we have some 505 Tacky Spray. Now, let's see if I can get the lid off. Is it brand new? It is brand new. They got me. There we go. <laughs> brand new can of 505. So with this Tacky Spray, what we do is we just give a little spritz. Let the camera lady, wonderfully Julia Page, point that down to us and give a quick spritz and then secure the fabric. You don't need a ton. I'm just giving a little extra so you all can see. And I made sure my picture matches up with my PDF reference for where the design goes. So once we have our spray adhesive piece of fabric down, we can now return this to the machine and run the special tacking step. Now this won't run as a standard two ply, so pay attention if you wanna see how it does this. But for printed fabric, it will run a standard two-ply and a zigzag stitch all in the same step. Now this will help keep it secure and prevent any edges from curling up. So with my hoop back in the block, or with my block back in the hoop, it's a Tuesday, y'all. We're going to go ahead and run that specialty tacking step for the printed fabric. And again, it will do a two-ply tacking step with a zigzag followed to that all in one machine step. If you're following along with me, stitching the same block that I am doing, we are on step four of the design for printed fabric block three. I wanna make sure you all know we are doing the block that says love. The best part about these printed fabric designs is that they are pretty much one thread color. You can choose to match your thread to your borders, uh, but for the most part, the whole design is done in a black thread was our choice, but you can use whatever color. And the rest of the design comes from the printed fabric uh, image on the block that you created. So we got our zigzag going. And the next part will be the fun part, which is our folded fabric borders. So I'm going to start with, we have the adorable doodle, whole pop them in black and white. But as I keep preaching to you all, color can be however you want it to be for designs and projects. Um, but this collection uses quilt blocks as a base and kind of creates these little pot holders for you. They even teach you how to add the loop and they have this really fun doodle look to them. We're doing this collection at half off from now until Sunday, so be sure to snag a copy of that and I'm pretty sure we'll be linking it with the video as well. So be sure to check it out, the doodle pot holder collection at 50% off until this Sunday. 
We'll mention that again, so if anyone missed out, we'll be sure to fill them in on it. I'm actually gonna leave my hoop in the machine. We finished that zigzag tacking step, and the next part of the design is going to be showing us where we put our folded fabric borders. So in order to know where we wanna lay something, we have to run the placement stitch. So I'm gonna run that next step, and it's letting me know we'll be doing the top border fabric first. I feel like we should do a giveaway still. Are we still doing those? I feel like being generous to my awesome viewers. Let's do keyword flower because there's flowers on our printed fabric. So go ahead in the comment section with the word flower and Brooke behind the scenes will pick someone at random for a $20 gift card to Anita's website. I wanna make sure we get that giveaway in there because the design finishes so fast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in there too, <laughs> we are going to take our cute little printed fabric here and we do have our first border placement stitch stitched out right at the top. Now for placing folded fabric, it is best to take the edge with the right side facing down away from you and aligning it just past the bottom of the placement stitch box. So I'm gonna turn my hoop so it's oriented for the camera. If you are looking at your design right side up, there it is, there is our placement stitch box. When you go to lay folded fabric, we wanna cover the bottom of the box by about a quarter inch or so. So if I fold this back here, you can see we're covering the bottom of the placement stitch with our folded fabric. Now for preventing any shifting, we can take some tape. Just so you guys can see where the stitch is gonna go next. And we are going to run the next machine step which will be a folding stitch. So from here we can take the hoop and place it back into the machine. Once you've done folded fabric, it gets super easy for everyone, I promise. It starts to become almost meditative with the process going back and forth. So once you get one or two under your belt, you'll be a pro in no time. All right, so we've run the folding stitch and I'll take that out of the machine just to show the camera again real quick at your orientation, what that should look like. These blocks are so fun, y'all. You should stitch one, even if you've never tried printed fabric, you get to do the whole creation process, but in like half the time. So there we have our folded fabric, our folded fabric uh, folding line, and we are going to remove that excess tape. So if you didn't have tape, that's fine too. Some people don't love their hands in the machine. But now that we have this, again, I'm orienting it towards the camera so you all can see the correct direction to fold and move things. But we're going to take our floppy fabric and now fold it over that folding stitch line. So when you're doing this at home, you wanna always make sure you have enough fabric to extend about a half inch past your quilt block. So these were perfectly pre-cut by Brooke, shout out to Brooke <laughs> for pre-cutting our fabric. And we will take a piece of tape, and <laughs> we gotta woo, and secure that folded fabric. Um, again, I'll show that 505 spray. If you are not a tape fan, we have that spray adhesive. You just give it a quick little spritz, fold it over, and now you don't need the tape. So just like that, we'll return it to the hoop. Now at this point, if you are using other thread colors, you can swap your thread to match your fabric. But we stuck with black thread for this whole project just for the ease of how simple it is. Um, so I have black as my tacking stitch color. But we'll go ahead and tack that border in place. Hope you all are entering flower in the comment section. All right, we got our first border tacked down. And without even pulling it out, I'm gonna move on and run the next machine step, which will be the placement stitch for the bottom border. So once you've done one border, regardless of where it's oriented in your design, if it does the left, the next one will always come opposite of it. So if you're on the top of the hoop, the next one will be on the bottom. Do we have a winner, Brooke? Yes. We're gonna run this placement stitch and announce our winner. Who is our winner for our $20 gift card? 
Roxanne Lenhart. Congratulations, Roxanne. You have been chosen at random for our $20 digital gift card to the website. So be sure to shoot an email to our customer experience team. Let them know you tuned in today's Watch and Stitch and that you were chosen, and we will send you that digital gift card code. So congratulations, Roxanne. And every week that we do these, that's a reminder that if you hop on here and tune in with us, you too could be a winner. All right, so since we did the pattern on the top, I'm going to do it again on the bottom. Same thing. I'm going to align the bottom edge of my fabric just past the inside of the stitch line, and we'll run that folding stitch. I'm going to use my hands since we discussed that I'm pretty comfortable holding it, but never fear of using tape. Perfect. And once the thread does its little dance, we are then going to fold that fabric across the folding stitch line, just like we did with the last piece. And again, you can use spray adhesive or tape. Since I'm gonna leave it in the machine, I don't wanna spray near the machine, we try to avoid that. So we're gonna use a piece of tape. We'll just fold our fabric. Fun pro tip again, you'll hear Anita use this term a lot, but we give our fold a good finger crease. So take our index or pointer finger and rub it along that folding stitch line once our fabric is folded and that creates a nice crisp edge to your material. There we go, and then we run that tacking stitch step to secure it in place. It's looking so cute. Yes, I hear we have a question, what's up? The tacking, does the tacking stitch on the border become the tacking stitch that essentially you see in the block? I believe, is that their question? Yeah, they want to know if you, if you use the tacking stitch to sew your blocks together. Yes, okay, so we were getting questioned about how you sew the blocks together if that tacking stitch line that you see on the block is what we use. And that would be correct. We do use the top visible tacking stitch line as well as the line that you can see where the, um, we like to call it the channel or the ditch on the back of the block as well, where the batting stitch and the fabric tacking stitch make a little tiny channel on the stabilizer. So when you go to place two blocks face to face, you can actually see that small channel and you can sew the blocks together using that edge. This is a quilt block, so I'm just holding it up for example. Um, but you do want to sew them face to face, stitching along that outer tacking stitch line. Um, if you stitch just inside of it, you actually will prevent any visible seam lines too. So there's some bonus quilting knowledge for you all. But that is correct, that tacking stitch line, that's usually why at Anita we uh, recommend matching your thread color to your materials. That way if you go to sew something together and you do happen to see the stitch line, it won't be as obvious if it's in something that kind of blends in or even if you use clear thread. So that's an excellent question. All right, so fun time for everyone to learn this process. We've done two borders on our block now, comes the important part. I am going to pull the hoop out, show it off to you all here so you can see what it's looking like. Now before we do the left and right borders, and again, if your block's turned in your hoop, this rule still applies, but once you've done one pair of borders, the opposing two, we have to remove these excess tabs of fabric. Now the reason we do this is as your machine's foot passes to do the placement stitch on the sides, you can already imagine it getting caught up in here, eating that fabric, and it can just make a mess out of your project. So to prevent any whoopsies or uh-ohs, we're gonna go ahead and take our scissors and just trim those extra tabs of material right to the tacking stitch line, leaving the seam allowance at the top. So again, I know Julia Page is turning that camera for you. I'll put it so this is correctly oriented. This is the top. And I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing here. But we're just gonna trim straight down and we do wanna leave the top and bottom seam allowance. So if you're new at printed fabric, this is definitely something to remember, but this is also for how we do our folded fabric. So if you do a normal folded fabric quilt block, same rules apply if you do the four borders. So we've trimmed our two tabs. The next process on screen for my machine is to run the placement stitch for one of the two sides. In this case, I believe it'll be this left side. So we'll pop our hoop back in and run our placement stitch. 
a quick reminder again about that doodle pot holder collection sale that we have going on these are make great gifts for anyone any time of year but i know the holidays are slowly creeping up on us again i can't believe it's already <laughs> the third week of august so fall is around the corner y'all and then comes christmas so get a head start on projects with 50 percent off our doodle pot holders collection that was released in October of 2016. So if you were all access, you may have that one already during that time. So just be sure to check. All right, so for our side borders, I'm not gonna pull the hoop out all the way, but we've done the same thing already twice. So we're gonna take our fabric strip. We're gonna align it to just the inside of that placement stitch box. And then we'll return the hoop and run our folding stitch. So as a quick reminder, general rule of thumb, folded fabric's always done with three steps, our placement stitch, our folding stitch, and our tack down or tacking stitch. So with those three, that creates one piece of folded fabric. So if you ever get lost in the process, just ask yourself, well, what part of the three steps am I in? So we just did our fold. And now again, since I'm leaving it in the hoop or in the machine, I don't wanna spray near the machine. So I'm gonna use some of this tape and give my fold a good finger crease again. And then put a piece of tape down and we can tack it in place. Some of the no show is showing on the left Ooh. corner. Yeah, there we go. We want everyone to be able to see. It has a mind of its own sometimes. Brooke gets all the kudos for pre-cutting our fabric perfectly. Take tips from her. She has uh, new articles on our blog, by the way. Um, so I know you all are used to seeing Brooke behind the scenes. She has been doing Anita's blog and is sharing great tips and tricks for you all about what we do behind the scenes and ways to jazz up your embroidery and projects. So continuously posting new things, be sure to check that out as well. All right, so we have our last side. Oh, I didn't even need to take it out yet. Well, we'll show you guys where it's at for now. <laughs> I have one more border to run, but we'll do those three steps again. But this is how it's looking so far. So as you can see, our printed fabric is nice and centered. And that specialty zigzag stitch that was there is now going to get concealed as we finish that last piece. So just a little pause and reflection to show you all what it looks like. And we're running our placement stitch for our final border piece. Again, the same process with our last piece. We place it down and we run our folding stitch. my people tuned in we are on the second to last machine step so everyone who's checking in on their progress and where they're at we have the final tacking stitch for our border and then we are going to move on to the fun part which is the final embroidery step yes yeah we'll show it off All right, so as that last step finishes up its little trim right there, we are on the final machine step for our printed fabric design. So I wanted to make sure I recap with everyone as we start the embroidery. I'm gonna go ahead and hit go because we're keeping the black thread here. Um, but for today's design, if you've been tuned in with us for today's watch and stitch, we started of course at 1.30 with today's project of printed fabric quilt blocks. So we did the printed fabric from this month's watch and stitch. If you have already purchased it, you might recognize it. It looks similar to this. Um, and as a reminder, we usually do our A size samples for most things Anita. Um, but for our live stitch out today, I chose to do the D size quilt block. So that one measures about 4.7 by 4.7. So a little bit smaller scale. Um, some of the materials that you guys would need on hand if you wanted to create this at home 
The first one is most important. You need an inkjet printer in order to do printed fabric. The reason being these types of printers will spray the ink across the paper surface and allow it to soak up the color while other ones kind of do like the roller method and it'll print the fabric out and it just makes a mess of it. So you do need an inkjet printer, but they can be purchased for fairly cheap nowadays. Printers have gone down in <laughs> desire and need, so not a lot of people have them. If you're hearing it, that's just the printed fabric going. It's stitching fast. Um, so you will want an inkjet printer in order to print these out. Um, we do include instructions with the tutorials anytime we have printed fabric included in the construction. And we also offer scaling options. So like I said, I did the smaller size. We do teach you how to scale down the printed fabric as well so you can fit it to the block you are doing. And make sure you print in full color <laughs> or else you'll get a grayscale picture. Um, so in this case, all the color for the design is pulled from the printed fabric image and the borders themselves, which we chose with a purple colored way. And real quick, Brooke asked that I hold this up again. So I wanted to show this one off for you all. This, again, is our flash sale for the week. This is on sale from today, y'all, starting today until this Sunday, which I believe is, is it the 21st? Is this Sunday, I think? Have confirmation from someone? I think it's the 21st, but don't hold me to it. Yes, it is. All right, I've been confirmed. The 21st. I don't have my calendar here. But uh, from now until Sunday, more than just this design included, but very cute style, very whimsical, and you can do them in all sorts of colors. We kept it very simple, black and white here. Um, I'll hold that up a little closer, but you can definitely have some fun with color and appearance there. And we even have the little loop added at the top. So great housewarming gift or holiday gift idea to get a head start on. Be sure to shop that at half off from now till Sunday. Taking a look at my block, it's looking good. The only parts that are left now are the bean stitched uh, forms of leaves and the florals that run over that printed fabric. And that's really what helps accentuate and accent the printed fabric design. So it's been digitized to outline and draw directly over top of where the printed fabric image is. And then the stitching and the design will unify as one. Um, it also had a sale going on. I wanted to remind you all about, I believe the sale is posted on our homepage of our website, but we are doing spend $40 and you will receive 40% off your next purchase. Is that right, Julia Page? We're gonna make sure to get it right for you all. <laughs> so I'll pull it up while we're on air. Um, but be sure to get that deal. That is happening currently. It's 40%. So spend 40, get 40% off coupon. Spend 40, get 40% off coupon. I wanted to make sure to throw that in there because it's a limited time offer from now till end of September, I believe. So check out the details on our site, um, but be sure to shop that sale as well. So 40% off um, your next purchase or a coupon for that. So you can get your holiday shopping done early. It's now through Sunday, just like <gasps> Now through Sunday, I lied. So it's like the flash sale. So you heard it here first, that ends Sunday. So head to our website to check out those details as well. And I did mention um, Brooke has been putting new articles on our blog. We have some regularly scheduled releases as well as some for the weeks to come. So be sure to check out Anita's blog off of our website. You can find it on there. And we're on Pinterest and pinning. So check us on all of our social media. I know you all don't want to miss sales or all the fun things we've been creating here in office. And send us pictures too. We love to see what everyone's working on. If you've stitched a recent release or a large collection or even a fun little project for a loved one, um, post it to our Facebook page or shoot us a message on Instagram and let us know. We'd love to see those. And I don't know what next week's schedule is, but as a reminder, every Tuesday we go live at 1.30 for our Watch and Stitch Stitch Outs. So this week was the printed fabric block, but for the whole month of August, we have different designs and different techniques chosen. And each week we'll pop on here with an educator to teach you how to stitch out that project or technique from start to finish. So you'll be a well-educated and well-rounded sewist <laughs> or embroiderer. What's up? Very cute. Some of the other ones in the printed fabric section, if you guys are curious, let's see. They're all so pretty. And Julia Page, I don't know if they'll be able to see if I hold it up, but I'd love for them to get a glimpse at some of these. Yeah, so, so, right around here? Yes, 
perfect. Now you guys should be able to see. So we have a bunch of different ones. We have a faith block, a hope block. Again, colors can be changed any way you'd like. Number three is the one we are stitching for the video today. And then we also have this beautiful blue one that doesn't have any words on it. So just a nice garden theme. And then one more with that really pretty marigold color on the back with a little bumblebee. So, so cute. These look great for spring or even summer. And with a quick color palette change, you could definitely make them for any other season as well. This is the fun part of printed fabric is getting to see it stitch out. As I'm watching it stitch out that rose, it's overlaying it onto the printed fabric design. And that has been specially digitized to line up and add that extra pop of color behind the stitching. So even with black thread, we still get really pretty purple flowers. Oh, I did a shout out for Brooke's blog, but I forgot to mention our sew in singles as well. If you all have not noticed on our homepage, we have come out with a whole new branch of design section called sew in singles. Um, we have been posting designs regularly, like every other to every two to three days on there. So you're getting new stuff. And then all throughout the week, we release a one a day design that Steve's been digitizing. And we've been sharing that process on social media. So be sure to check out, it's on Instagram, right? Julia Page for the live video of it. So we have some videos on Instagram of Steve getting that started in the morning and then our creative team stitching those out and then the final finished design as well that you can purchase by the end of the day. So every day be sure to check out our different one design a day on our sew and singles section and we have some new designs coming soon too. So I hope you guys like them. We are just about finished with this flower here. And then I will trim with some scissors just to show you the finished block. But remember, if you're at home, you can go grab your rotary cutter and ruler and have that handy as well. I prefer rotary cutter and ruler, but for today, I will use scissors just so that's on the record. <laughs> she offered to get it for me, and I said, no, it's fine. Brooke's done enough today. Thank you, B. All right, you guys. This is so cute and it finished up fairly quickly for today's live stitch out. So that just goes to show can come in different sizes. I believe we go all the way up to triple A. I wanna make sure before I say it. Yes, so we have all six sizes in here for quilt blocks. So you could do this with mix and match. You could even stitch some of these and combine them with another quilting collection. So very cute. Real quick, I'm gonna pop it out and give it a little trim with some scissors and show you that trim down block just so you have a little visual. So I got some nice sharp scissors here. Again, I am definitely a rotary cutter and ruler gal normally. So if you're at home, I'm all about those straight edges. But we'll just trim that excess stabilizer away so you guys can see the block. Need new scissors on this team, ha ha ha. If you're watching me chop away at this stabilizer. There we go. All right, nice and easy. So there it is. Isn't that so cute? So printed fabric. That was this week's design for our watch and stitch video session. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to stitch this one out. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for our 1.30 live stitch outs. And don't forget our doodle pot holder design is on special at 50% off from now until this Sunday, as well as that extra sale on the website for that get $40 if you spend $40 or 40% if you get, check out the site for the details on that one. But don't miss our awesome sales and be sure to sign up to our newsletters and social media pages for more. Um, happy stitching y'all and thanks for watching.